So uh, let's let's look at the list of symmetry operations for a molecule, and this will this will illustrate uh, some of the key things that we need to keep in mind while writing down the symmetry elements. So let's consider a molecule BH3 boron trihydride, and uh, this is a planar molecule. So it's a pl it's a planar molecule, and it's triangular. So it is B. So it looks like this. Okay. Each of these angles are 120 degrees. Okay. Now, uh, now let's try to write down the various symmetry elements. Obviously, the sim first symmetry element you write is the identity element. Okay. Then, uh, then we notice that uh, this, if you, if you take a, if you take, if you take an axis perpendicular to the board, okay, then that's a C3 axis. So C3 will generate C3. And C three square. These are the two operations generated by this axis perpendicular to the plane of the board. Then you'll say that there should be these x axis. So so each of these each of these corresponds to a C two axis because you rotate by you 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 go along this axis along the BH bond. You take that axis. That's a C two axis, and uh, we'll call these three. We'll call them. We'll just order them. We'll call this C two. We'll call this C two prime, and we'll call this C two double prime. C two, C two prime, C two double prime. Okay. So it's C two because you you rotate by one eighty degrees, and you get back the the an equivalent configuration. Also, we notice that this this plane, this plane, okay. Is a symmetry plane because you reflect about this plane, then these two H atoms are interchanged. Okay, whereas this H atom and the B remain remain the in their in their original locations. So so there is there are three sigma sigma V's. So sigma V, sigma V prime, sigma V double prime. Okay, so this so we just call these three. So we can call this plane as sigma V. This this plane as sigma v prime, this plane as sigma v double prime. Are there any more symmetry operations? Okay, now uh, we one thing, one symmetry operation that is very obvious is the reflection. About since this is a planar molecule, it has a plane of reflection. So, so there is a sigma h. Okay, so the plane containing the three three atoms is the sigma h. Okay. And then, since it contains a C three and a perpendicular sigma h, there'll be there'll be an S three. Okay, so 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 this axis is an S three axis because you rotate you rotate by one hundred twenty degrees and then you reflect about a plane perpendicular, you get back an equivalent configuration. Okay. Now, uh, what are the remaining operations? So so you have S three. Now S three square. S three generates a whole set of operations. S three generates S three square, S but S three square is same as C three square. So this is S three square. Okay. S three cube, S three S three cube is same as sigma h. S three S three three times is nothing but sigma h because S three S three three times is uh, you can you can see s three s three square equal to c three square sigma h square equal to c three square s three cube is equal to c three cube sigma h cube is equal to c three cube is identity sigma h cube is sigma h. Okay. What about s three four? So uh, so. So I can write this as C three four sigma h four sigma h four is identity C three four is just C three S three five S three five is is C three five sigma h five This is C three square times sigma h. Okay. So and S three six is identity. 
So clearly the only two distinct operations. So this is a new operation S3 and S3 file. So these are the only two new operations. The rest of the ones are already listed in this list. So so the only other symmetry operation we need to list is S3 file. So so you have 12 symmetry operations, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And uh, these are the 12 symmetry operations of the H3 molecule. Okay. Now let's make up the multiplication table for this group. So to make up the multiplication table, uh, you have to write all the 12 elements, t square. And it's instructive to do this once so that uh, so that you don't have I mean, if you if you work this out once, then uh, then once you have the practice, you can do it for many other groups. So, so um, I'll just write the multiplication table. It's, I won't I won't bother writing the same row again. I'll just start straight with. Three, three. Okay. So I just I just wrote the first row and the first column. Okay. So the first row and the first column is this. Now what is uh, so now, now what comes here is C3 times C3, that is C3 square. Here C3 square times C3, that is identity. Here C3 times C3 square is identity. C3 square, C3 square is C3. Okay. And now, 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 now what comes here is C2 followed by C3. Okay. So C2 followed by C3. So remember, what does C2 do? So C2 will switch these two hydrogens, okay? And then and then if you do a C3 axis, so then this hydrogen will come here. This hydrogen comes back to where it was, okay? And uh, and this this hydrogen uh, and the hydrogen that was here ends up here, okay? So it corresponds to uh, C2 double prime, okay? So so you you can verify this. So C C2 will bring this this hydrogen over here, and then uh, C2 followed by C3 will bring it here. Okay, so this hydrogen came back to where it was. Okay, but the other two hydrogens they swap their position. Okay, because this hydrogen went here, this hydrogen came here, and that corresponds to a C2 double prime. So so you can show that this is C2 double prime. And then this will end up being C2 prime. This will be C2, C2 prime, C2 double prime, C2. Okay. So and the, and and notice that the product of two rotations should be another rotation. Okay. So C C2 followed by C3 gives me C2 double prime. Okay. Now what about sigma v followed by C3? So let's look at that. So sigma v will switch these two okay so sigma v will end up switching these two okay and if you follow it by c3 if you follow sigma v by c3 what you'll end up getting is uh, is will be sigma v double prime Sigma H times C three is just S three. S three uh, S three times C three is just sigma uh, S S three five. And S three five times C three is sigma H. This is S three five. Sigma H. S three.
and uh, I can go ahead and now I can I can do the same thing. I can evaluate all of these. Okay, I can evaluate all of these. So for example, we'll just do a few of them and then we'll write the remaining. So what is C3 followed by C2? So suppose I do C3 first. So C3 will will uh, let's say bring this hydrogen here. Okay, and then followed by C2. So that has come here. Okay, so this hydrogen has come here, and that corresponds to a C2 prime. And C2 times C2 is nothing but identity. C2 prime, C2 prime is identity. C2 double prime, C2 double prime is identity. Uh, what is uh, C2 prime followed by C2 prime followed by uh, C2? Okay. So, so, so if you if I do C2 prime, then these two hydrogens are swapped. Okay. And if I follow it by by uh, a C2, okay, then uh, then this hydrogen ends up coming here, okay. So so this hydrogen got swapped here and then it came here, okay. And uh, this hydrogen came here, okay. So so it turns out to be a C3 rotation. So this is C3, C3 square, C3. C three square, C three, C three square. Okay, so this is this part is. Okay. Now next, uh, if I do C two, if, if I do sigma v followed by C two, sigma v followed by C two, uh, this will. Followed by C two, this will be nothing but. So sigma v followed by C two. Sigma v will will reflect in this direction. Okay. So so it will be directly translated here. And then you do a, a C two. Then it will correspond to rotation by one eighty degrees. So the net effect is a sigma h. Similarly, sigma two prime, sigma v prime is sigma h, and sigma two double prime, sigma v double prime is sigma h. Okay. And uh, what is sigma v prime followed by c2 so sigma v prime okay that will take this here followed by c2 no sorry sigma 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 v prime will take this to this followed by c2 that means this stays where it is so uh, that corresponds to that corresponds to an s3 s3 so this corresponds to S three, S three five, S three, S three five, S three. Okay, and then and then you can show that uh, sigma h followed by sigma v. That is just uh, no sigma h followed by C two is just sigma v prime. This is sigma v double. No oh, sigma v sigma v prime. And sigma v double prime. S three followed by C two. S three followed by C two is just uh, is just sigma h uh, is just sigma v followed by C three. And uh, if you just look at sigma v and C three, you will get sigma v double prime. Double prime. Sigma v prime. This sigma v. Sigma v. Okay, so we have reconstructed most of the most of the group, and you can you can do all the remaining remaining part. I won't uh, I won't go into too many. I won't uh, go into actually constructing the remaining. But uh, essentially, you can you can show that you can show that what comes here will just be will just be three sigma v's. And this whole region is just.
sigma x c3 is s3 is 3 pi x3 times c3 is sigma h x3 pi times c3 is sigma h okay. so this is x3 s3 pi s3 times c3 is s3 pi s S3 times C3 square is sigma h. We have sigma h. S3. Now uh, this will be C3 followed by sigma v prime. That is same as sigma v prime followed by C3, and that is sigma v. And so this will be sigma v double prime. Sigma v. Okay. Sigma v double prime, and uh, so this should be sigma v double prime, sigma v. That's that should be. Okay. Now, what about C two followed by sigma v? So C two followed by sigma v is again sigma v followed by C two. So sigma v followed by C two is sigma h. So we have sigma h. C two prime followed by sigma v. Okay, so that is same as sigma v followed by C two prime. Okay, so that is sigma v followed by C two prime is s three to the five. This is s three. So uh, this should be sigma h. This will be sigma h. So this will be s three to the five, s three, s three to the five, s three. Now uh, sigma v, sigma v is just identity. So we have sigma v double. We have these three. Uh, sigma sigma v prime followed by sigma v. Sigma v prime followed by sigma v, so that uh, sigma v prime will take this here, followed by sigma v, that will keep this here. So this 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 atom ended up here, and that corresponds to a that corresponds to a C three C three rotation. So this is C three C three square C three C three square C three. And uh, sigma v times sigma h, so that is same as sigma h times sigma v, and uh, that will be okay. So we have to so uh, sigma v times sigma h will be nothing but c three. C two, C two, this will be C two prime, C two double prime. Now S three followed by sigma v. Okay, that is same as C two followed by C three, and C two followed by C three is C two prime. So it should be C two double prime. C two followed by C three is C two double prime. C two, C two, C two And you can go ahead and fill fill these three also. So uh, so C two followed by sigma h. That is that is sigma v. 
C2 prime followed by sigma h as sigma v prime. C2 double prime followed by sigma h as sigma v double prime. So sigma h followed by sigma v prime is c2 prime. This is c2 double prime. Okay. Uh, c so s3 followed by sigma v. So this should be so these are all these are some c2 operations. You can identify exactly which one it is. So s3 followed by sigma v. S3 is c3 times sigma h. Okay. So sigma h followed by sigma v is uh, c2. So c c2 uh, so it is c3 followed by c2. So c3 followed by c2 is c2 prime. So it comes in this order. C2. Okay. And uh, here 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 we can fill the remaining. So so s3 followed by c2 prime. So, so, so what we have C2 followed by S3. S3 is uh, same as uh, C3 into sigma h. So, C2 into sigma h is uh, sigma v. So, sigma v followed. Uh, so, C, sigma v followed by C3. So, sigma v followed by C3 is sigma v double prime. Double prime, and then this should be sigma v prime, sigma v, sigma v prime. Okay. So, uh, so most of the group is done, and uh, I'll just, I'll just, just for convenience, I'll put it into these little blocks so that. And you immediately see something that's happening. Within this whole block, you only have sigma v, sigma v prime, and sigma v double prime. Similarly, in this block, you just have s3, s3 five, and sigma h. In this block, again s3, s3 five, sigma h. In this block, you have e, c3, and c3 square, and uh, so on. So, like uh, in each of these blocks, there seems to be uh, one of these sets, one of these sets seem that seems to be ap appearing entirely within these blocks. Okay. So, so let's complete this. Now, uh, sigma v times sigma h is c2. This is c2 prime, c2 double prime. Sigma v followed by s3. Again, again, this is this should be s3 followed by sigma v. So it should be c2 prime. Prime. C2. C2. And uh, sigma h, sigma h times sigma h is e. Sigma h, uh, c3, sig, uh, s3 followed by sigma h is same as c3. This is c3 square. Sigma h followed by s3 is c3, c3 square. So this should be s3 followed by s3. That is c3 square identity. Identity. So notice how the how the various groups, how the how the multiplication table naturally divides into these blocks. Okay. And again, again, uh, you have the rule that every row and every column has to have each element appearing exactly once. So if you go down any row or you go across any column, each element has to appear exactly once. Okay. So these are the characteristics of the multiplication table. Now, uh, there are a few things that you have to be very careful when you make the multiplication table, and I'll try to illustrate this right here. So, uh, let's take this example. So, I said that uh, C2 times C3, okay, so we said that C, C2 followed by C3 is C2 double prime. Okay. 
So what we said is the following. Let's uh, can I illustrate this by showing this. So C three, C two. Okay, C three, C two means first you operate by C two and then by C three. Okay, so that is first operate by C two and then by C three you get C two double prime. Okay. So now now let's look at this. So C two. So so suppose I have suppose I start with B. H and I call this one, two, three. So suppose I operate by C two, C two. What I get is the H will this first H will be where it is. So this is still H one. Okay. These two will get sw switch. So this is H two. This is H three. So when I operate by C two, then I switch. I this edge comes here, that edge comes here. Then I operate again by C three. So if I do a C three operation, then what I get is B H H H. I have one here, three, and I have two. Okay, so I just rotate it clockwise. Okay. Now uh, notice one thing. That I call this. I said that this this operation from here to here. Okay, this operation I called it. I called it C two prime. And uh, C two prime, if you look at it, so so C two prime means. Uh, so, so sorry, C two double prime. So C two double prime means three uh, is where it is. So so three is where it is. Two and one are switched. Okay, so now now the obvious question that will arise is the following: that uh, suppose I did, suppose I did, uh, H. Okay, and this is my sigma v double prime. So if I reflect about sigma v double prime. This So if I if, if I perform a reflection about sigma v double prime, then what I get is exactly that configuration. So this is three, this is one, and this is two. Okay, so the B is where it is. The H, the two H's are switched. Okay. So, so this means that, uh, and uh, so so why did I call this? Why did I call this C three? And why did I call this? Why did I not call this operation sigma v double prime? Why did I call it C two C two double prime? Okay, why did I call it C two double prime? Why didn't I call it sigma v double prime? Okay, so this is the this is the question that will come. So if you just look at the configuration, the answer is that uh, if you just look at the configurations for this BH three molecule, then uh, the effect of uh, C two double prime and sigma v double prime, they seem to have the same effect on the molecule. Okay, so whether I since it's a planar molecule, whether I reflect or I rotate by one eighty degrees, I seem to get the same same net effect. Okay, however. However, it is important to keep in mind that these two, as operations, they are different operations. Okay, so but these two are different operations. Okay, so uh, for a molecule that was not planar, for a molecule that was not planar, their effect would be different because suppose suppose uh, you had a you had a molecule that was not planar, you had an H, you had uh, something coming out here. Okay, that would go inside, whereas in a reflection, it would still stay out above the board. Okay, so as operations, sigma v sigma v double prime and sigma h are different. So as operations, sigma v double prime and c two double prime are different. Okay, even though they they seem to have the same effect on this planar molecule, even though. 
even though for the planar molecule they seem to have the same effect but as operations these two are different and this is a very important thing to keep in mind when you are making the multiplication table of of any uh, for any set of operations okay so 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 we'll always remember this in mind that that when you are doing the multiplication table you are writing the product of operations okay not the net effect the net effect of these two operations can be thought of as either a c2 double prime or, or, or as a say, sigma v double prime because they have the same effect on this molecule but as operations these two are different okay and uh, this is a product of two rotations so it should be a rotation and in fact you can show that this is c2 double prime this is c2 double prime and this is not sigma v double prime okay so so remember sigma v double prime and c2 double prime are not the same operation even though they they have the same effect on this planar molecule but uh, sigma v just reflects things from from this plane to here whereas c2 rotates it by 180 degrees okay so so if you had anything that was outside the plane out that was coming outside at this hydrogen where, uh, under a c2 under a c2 operation that that piece would go inside whereas in a in a in a in a simple reflection that piece would come that piece would still stay outside the board okay so now this gets us to a point that uh, how do we how do we what is a good way to see this effect is there any way in which i can immediately look at uh, product of operations and identify exactly which operations it is in this case it was easy because i knew that uh, this is a product of two rotations so it should be a rotation so if i had a choice between c2 and c2 double prime i'll say that it should be it should be uh, c2 if if i had a choice between c2 double prime and sigma v double prime i would choose c2 double prime but in general how do you how do you characterize operations okay and uh, this is the next part that i'm going to do and uh, i'll do that uh, i'll do that right here so so what we should do is we should take an arbitrary point okay an arbitrary point in space so let's take a coordinate system that is centered at the b atom okay that is centered at the b atom okay and you have an arbitrary point x y z i will repoint x y z or you can think of it as a vector x y z now when you do an operation when you do one of these symmetry operation this goes to some other vector okay this goes to some other vector with the same length okay so so it goes to some new vector x prime y prime z prime so if you do this if you do an operation so so we write this in the following way x prime y prime z prime is equal to this operation i'll just call the operation x operator on x y z so this is operation okay. so let's take some examples so suppose x is equal to e so e operator on x y z okay so that will give you a point e will will give you the same point that's so why x y z okay and usually the commas are not put when you write this so x y z goes to x y z under e what about uh, c2 so if i do c2 of x y z okay now uh, you are taking an arbitrary point okay and when you rotate it so 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 let's call this the x axis x axis okay this is the y axis and the z axis is perpendicular to the plane of the board okay so so we so we chose our axis such that this is b and this is h one of the h is okay so c2 corresponds to 180 degree rotation about the x axis x axis y axis and z axis is perpendicular so c2 so so when you do a 180 rotation 180 degree rotation about the x axis okay it's not hard to calculate what will happen so uh, the x coordinate will remain the same okay so the x coordinate won't change at all since you are along the x axis so this part is clear okay. what about the y axis so when you do a 
180 degree rotation y will go to minus y okay so y will go to minus y and this is denoted by y bar and z goes to minus z okay so z axis if it is forward if you do 180 degree rotation it will go to the other side so z goes to z bar okay so this is the effect of c2 okay so so when i do c2 on an arbitrary point the x coordinate will not change y coordinate will go to minus y z coordinate will go to minus z similarly you can do uh, let's say sigma v so if i do sigma v okay then i i am reflecting about this point the uh, reflecting in this plane the plane in which i am reflecting is the xz plane xz plane so if you reflect about the xz plane then x and z remain the same x x x coordinate and z coordinate will remain the same y coordinate will change sign okay because sigma v corresponds to reflection about the x z plane okay. okay so this so now 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 you can immediately see by this by this notation you can immediately see that uh, c2 and sigma v are different okay so as operations they are different c2 will take a point x y z to x y bar z bar whereas sigma v will take a point x y z to x y bar z okay so there is a fundamental difference between c2 and sigma v now uh, now i leave it as an exercise to you to work out all the remaining operations okay i'll write a few so so for each of these you have to identify what is c3 what is c3 square okay so for example what is what will c3 be so yeah c3 operator on x y z okay the z coordinate will remain the same okay what about the x and y coordinate okay so c3 correspond to well, corresponds to 120 degree rotation so if you rotate this vector by 120 degrees about the z axis then uh, you know that uh, that your x prime is x s cos x cos theta so rotation by 120 degrees x prime becomes x cos theta plus y sin theta and your y prime becomes x sin theta minus y cos theta Uh, yeah so 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 now cos theta so cos 120 degrees is equal to half minus half sin 120 degrees equal to root 3 by 2 okay so c3 of x y z is equal to this is minus x by 2 so it is x bar by 2 plus y root 3 by 2 Cos uh, sorry, this is cos theta minus sin theta. This is sin theta plus cos theta. Okay, so this is plus y bar by two. Then this is x root three by two minus y bar by two and z. So this is the solution. Okay. So, so like this, you can work out all the remaining uh, operations. I'll leave it as an exercise to you to work out all the remaining operations. Okay. So uh, next, we'll continue. We'll try to identify all the classes. Okay. So you identify all the classes of this group. Okay. You can show that the classes are uh, are, are are just E. E is one class. C three, C three square. the 3 uh, sigma v so we'll try sigma h s3 s3 5 and the 3 c2 so we already worked this out okay so so we'll stop here and we'll start looking at uh, more of these operations next time so what we were saying is that uh, you can represent all your operations as transformations on an arbitrary point okay and to do that 
what we have to do first is to define our access system. So first is define access system. Okay, then then uh, then you consider an arbitrary point. Or an arbitrary point. x y z and then and then you operate find out the point x prime y prime z prime to which x y z is mapped onto which x y 0 is mapped, mapped under, under operation, under symmetry operation. Okay. So, just to repeat what we should do first is, is to make the axis system okay. and this is, this is uh, relative to molecule and I will and I'll say exactly what I mean. Okay, then consider an arbitrary point x y z find out find out the point onto which x y z is mapped to under symmetry operation. So, so in the example that we considered we considered the a b cube planar. Okay. So, now, now my axis I am going to define my axis so that x axis passes through one of the b's the origin is always at the center of the molecule origin is always at the center of the molecule. And uh, and if this is the x y plane, or x y plane, and z is perpendicular, so the x y plane, the other two b's are in the x y plane. Okay, so this b and this b are in the x y plane. They make one twenty degrees with this, with the x axis. Okay, and one twenty degrees here. Okay. So, what this means is that our our C 2 C 2 axis this C 2 axis is located along along the x axis this C 2 axis is located in the x y plane ok. So, this is C 2 prime C 2 double prime both of them are located in the x y plane. So, so this implies C 2 C 2 prime C 2 double prime are in x y plane ok. And uh, sigma v sigma v sigma v prime sigma v double prime contain z axis and uh, sigma v will be in the x z plane ok. Sigma v prime will be in a plane that contains the z axis and uh, it, uh, it, it makes an angle 120 degrees with the x axis and similarly sigma v prime will make an angle of minus 120 degree with the x axis and it contains the z axis ok. So, uh, similarly what else can you say about the other plane. So, C 3 is along z axis C 3 and S 3 S 3 C 3 are along z axis sigma h is x y plane ok. And now and now knowing all this we can write we can write the we can write each of the operations ok. The more uh, so, so uh, I will just I will just quickly list the operations. So, E E operator on x y z gives me x y z ok which is very obvious. I will write the obvious ones first and then and then we will do the more complicated ones ok. Now, C 2 operator on x y z ok. So, C 2 
operator on x, y, z, it will not change x, it will not change x at all, okay, but y will be mapped to minus y, z will be mapped to minus z. So, this is x, y bar, z bar. Now, uh, we, before we let us do the easy ones as I said, let us look at uh, sigma v operator on x, y, z okay. and uh, sigma v is the x, z plane. So, x and z axis will remain the same, y axis will be mapped to minus y. So, this is x, y bar, z okay. So, that is sigma v. What about uh, sigma h? Okay, sigma h is the x y plane. So, sigma h will keep x and y the same and z will be mapped to minus z, z bar. Okay. What about c 3 of x y z? Okay. So, this is also not very hard to calculate. This is 120 degree rotation. So, suppose you had an arbitrary point x y z that is rotated by 120 degrees about about the z axis it will come to it will come to some x prime y prime z prime okay and you know the relation between x x y z and x y x prime y prime z prime so so you know that uh, z prime is equal to z since the rotation is c3 is about the z axis so the z coordinate will not change x coordinate x coordinate the new x coordinate will be a will be a combination of the original uh, x and y coordinate. So, it is x I will write it here x prime equal to s cos theta minus y sin theta where theta equal to 120 degrees. So, cos 120 is minus half. So, it is minus x by 2 sin 120 is root 3 by 2. So, minus root 3 y by 2 okay. and uh, y prime y prime is x sin theta plus y cos theta. So, it is x three by 2 minus half y. Okay. So, if we put this together x prime is just x bar by 2 plus plus root 3 by 2 y bar x bar plus root 3 y bar by 2 y prime x bar uh, x minus uh, x root 3 my uh, plus y bar. So, x root 3 plus y bar by 2 and z. Okay, so, this is the this is the result of a C 3 operation. Okay. Now, uh, how will you calculate how will you calculate uh, C 3 prime? How, uh, how, how will we calculate C 3 square? So, first C 3 square okay, we do not have to do much we just operate by C 3 twice and we will get C 3 square. So, then it will just be uh, you can do it in a few different ways, but if you just do the if you just do the operation again on this, what you'll get is the following. Uh, so you'll get uh, x bar minus root three y bar by two, or x bar x bar plus root three y by two. Okay. This will be uh, sine theta. So x bar root 3 plus y bar by 2 z bar ok. So, that is c 3 square ok. It is not hard to show. You can do it in two ways. You can either operate by by c 3 twice or you can just see the operation uh, this corresponds to rotation by minus 120 degrees. So, c 3 square corresponds to rotation by 240 or rotation by minus 120. Okay, so, so you can do it in either way. Okay, so, we finished about half the operations 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. So, the remaining 6 they correspond to sigma v prime and, and so on. 
Okay, what about S3? What about S3? S3 is just C3 followed by followed by sigma h. Okay, sigma h just uh, all it does is changes the z coordinate. So S3 of x, y, z is just this same thing when you ch and you change the z coordinate to z bar x bar plus to z bar that is s3 and similarly s3 square s3 raised to 5 x y z this is just c3 square into sigma h. So, this is just uh, C 3 square is just root 3 y by 2 C 3 square should just have z sorry C 3 square should just have had a z. So, now it will become S 3 S 3 5 will have z bar. Okay, so this is this is also not too difficult. Now uh, the tricky part is uh, calculating C two double prime, C uh, calculating C two prime, C two double prime, sigma v prime, and sigma v double prime. Okay, so those are the those are the slightly more uh, tricky, not a whole lot more tricky, because uh, because you know that uh, C two prime, C two prime is is same as. Uh, is same as uh, C C three followed by C two, right? So if I do C three, then this will come here, and if I follow it by C two, then this will this will come here. Okay, so so C two prime is same as C three C two. So you use uh, equal to C two C three. Okay, so it is C two C three is is uh, so you do C three first. Okay, so then then this B will come here. Then you do C two. Then this B will come back here. So that that will correspond to a C two prime. Okay, so C two prime is C two times uh, C three. Okay, or or in other words, C three operated first followed by C two. So then you can calculate what is uh, so C three just gives me so this is C two operated on x bar plus root 3 y bar by 2 x root 3 plus y bar by 2 z and you operate on that by c2 and what c2 will do is to change y bar uh, change y and z to y bar and z bar. So, x remains the same. So, this is just x bar plus root 3 y bar by 2. Uh, you change you change the sign of this so x bar root 3 plus y by 2 and z bar so that is c2 prime okay so so you have c2 prime x bar plus root 3 y bar by 2 x bar root 3 plus y by 2 and z bar. Okay, so, that is uh, C 2 prime. Similarly, you can also write that uh, sigma v prime is sigma v followed by C 3 or C 3 followed by sigma v. Okay. So, so you can do exactly the same thing and uh, sigma v if you remember if you if you look at this it only changes y bar. Okay. So, it keeps x and z the same it keeps uh, x x and z the same as as you get when you operate by c3 and it changes the sign of y y bar so this is just uh, so i can write sigma v bar of x y z this is just uh, so keep keep x and z uh, keep keep x to this and z to this so you get change the sign of y. So, y will become x bar root 3 plus y by 2 
okay, and keep the sign of z as it is. So z remains z. Okay, so that is sigma v prime. Okay, and uh, very very easily you can evaluate uh, you can evaluate sigma v double prime. Sigma v double prime is just uh, c2 followed by c3 square. c3 square followed by c2 will give me c2 double prime. And uh, similarly, c3 square followed by sigma v v will give me sigma v double prime. Okay, so in this way you can uh, you can represent all the operations. And the nice thing about this sort of representation is that you can take products of operations very easily. You can you can see exactly if you if you follow if you follow uh, s3 phi by c2 prime. Okay, if you do s3 phi followed by c2 prime, you can easily you can easily show what points it will map onto. Okay, you can easily calculate uh, what the result of of uh, various operations is. Okay, so. Uh, so so this is something that we'll keep in mind, and we'll come back to this again when we look at uh, look at uh, the the various representations of a group. Okay, but uh, what we'll say right now is that this is a very convenient uh, tool to to study the various operations, and uh, in the next class we'll start looking at uh, various operations in molecules and looking at various representations.